Hi, this is Robert from Lounge Audio. So I'd just like to let you know how I finally decided to go with the LCR circuit once I started breadboarding it. In order to have a reference, I also breadboarded a normal phono preamp circuit from, a, from an op-amp cookbook so that I would have a benchmark to, uh, to know the sound of the two together. And that way I had two different circuits to bounce off each other as I said, listening to albums. So um, once I got the circuits working and I could actually play music through them, I went out and got some albums. And one of the first ones that I used was this one. This is a Curtis Mathis, uh, very Americana type album from the late 50s. Um, as you can see, Curtis Mathis was not really a record company. They made consoles to sell to you for your, for your homeroom. It was like your grandparents' console right here. Anyway, this has a bunch of uh, different types of recordings, but all very Americana things. Just to give you an example, Smoke Gets in Your Eyes by Paul Western Orchestra, um, Sun, Some Enchanted Evening, Percy Faith, and um, here's a Ray Conniff tune, Whistle Happy Tune, Anyway, this is all very Americana stuff. And what struck me between the um, op-amp cookbook circuit and the LCR was, on the LCR circuit, I could hear the different masterings, because these were all recorded in different studios and mastered by different people all in one album. You could really hear the differences on the LCR circuit versus the op-amp cookbook circuit. So anyway, um, also, here's an interesting thrift store find also, kind of rare in Los Angeles to find a 12 inch dance single sitting in a, in a backwoods thrift store. But that's uh, what came to me as I'm flipping through the albums. This is a tune I'd heard a million times as a teenager. It's called Foxy Hot Number. This was uh, Foxy's um, uh, follow up release from a smash hit song they had called Get Off. This is, this is Typical disco, very slickly produced pop disco tune. And I'd heard this song a million times on the radio. When I played it on the LCR uh, prototype circuit, it was incredible. It was, it was stunning to hear it. It was like hearing it for the first time in a lot of ways because of all the panning and all the dynamic stuff going on. And um, also this was the first 12 inch dance single I played and the, uh, the, how much louder it was and how much more dynamic it was than a regular LP was something else that clued me that I'm getting in the right direction because I could hear the differences. And another thrift store find, this is Harry Belafonte. It's got the Deo song, Deo, Deo. So we've probably all heard that. Um, so when I heard this, even though I've heard the song a million times too, uh, even though this is an older album, pretty beat up, mastering isn't all that great, but it was stunning to hear it for the first time. Also, this is a, this is a mono, so, um, so it was uh, also interesting to hear a mono tune through the, through the LCR circuit. And it was fabulous. Uh, it was just, just amazing, a song I'd heard a million times, and again, like hearing it the first time. Now for something a little more interesting. So I have Big Audio Dynamite, the LP that has um, the song Bottom Line on it, and then the 12 inch dance single that also has Bottom Line on it. So this was the first time I could hear the same song going between LP and 12 inch dance single. And also the translation of the pressing, how much louder it was, how much more dynamic it was, um, was, was also something that clued me in that is going the right direction with LCR because uh, the LCR circuit versus the op-amp cookbook circuit, uh, there was no comparison. Now, another surprise was the B side of this 12 inch dance single had this song, Bad. And this is one of those kind of spacey 80s kind of remix type uh, dance tunes that really, there really isn't much of a song content as this is just a vehicle, A, to fill up the B side of something, B, to play around with all the stereo uh, reverb effects that were available at the time, the ping pong sounds, reverb explosions, looped samples, stuff like that. And uh, I'd heard other 80s dance mix songs um, at, in, in friends' houses in the 80s and on the radio. When I played this, it was shocking to hear 
all the reverbs and all the panning effects. And that's uh, another way I knew that the LCR was really the way to go because of the representation of this song that was uh, quite stunning at the time. So that's how I knew the direction I was going with the LCR.